I failed so many times. People probably know that I'm applying jobs for so many jobs. Over 30 jobs, all rejected, not even got a chance. 24 of us were interviewed for a KFC job. 23 accepted. I was the only guy rejected. <laughs> Six people went for looking for a police job. Five accepted. I was the only one. My cousin and I applied job as a server in a four-star hotel in my city. We waited a long queue for two hours. He was accepted. I was rejected. <laughs> so my mother looked at me, oh. <laughs> but I know this is a training course for me. Before th my 30 years old, I'm a failure. People lose, but I never give up. Need motivation? Watch Top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation. Being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too. It's like your morning coffee, but for your goals, kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity. So here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days. And let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. So today let's learn from one of the best, Jack Ma, and our take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two is have strong beliefs. A great entrepreneur should not have a money. If you have a money in mind, this eyes is US dollars, this eyes is INB, and you're talking like English pounds. Nobody will work with like. If you have a good dream, if you have a plan to making things, making progress, things will happen. Supporting entrepreneurs is always my, my dream because I know how tough it is to be an entrepreneur. It is difficult. I never cry. I said, I only make my competitors cry. And this is what I tell every day to myself. Today is difficult. Tomorrow is much more difficult. But the day of tomorrow is beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening. Even today as my size, for our company's size, I still believe today is very difficult. I have more problems than anybody here can imagine. You say, ah, oh, now you are big. You make a billions of dollars every you know, quarter. I have much more problems than you have. Much more headache than you have. Rule number three is learn from the mistakes of others. If you want to be successful, learn from the other people's mistakes. Don't learn from the successful stories. Successful stories they make, <laughs> don't listen to that. There are a lot of reasons behind it. Just like um, I remember the first time Harvard Business School came to us, say, Jack, we want to write a case study for you. Yes, years 2001 or 2000. They came, they spent one week, and they write a report, and I read, no, no, I said, this is not me. <laughs> and they said, this is you. I said, no, this is not us. He said, this is you. <laughs> so they make up his sign, and the case study go up, and they start to teach in a lot of universities. The next five years, they invited me to go to the case study, and they always find a competitor of my company. And after every case study, Alibaba will die, that company will succeed. All the students agree. And actually, every five years, all the competitors die, we still survive. <laughs> so how can you study this kind of a successful story? <laughs> Learn from the mistakes, the other people, no matter how smart you are you will encounter these mistakes. You learn from mistakes not because you will be able to avoid mistakes. You will able to, when these mistakes come, this suffer comes, you know how to deal with it. How to face it. I, I, the book I want to write, if I, if I want, mm. if I can, is Alibaba 1001 Mistakes. <laughs> this is the most treasurable things that in my life. In my life, it's not how much we achieved, it's how much we gone through the tough days and mistakes. And this is what, you, if you start to think now, it would be good. The future has no experts. Right? We entrepreneurs, someday we are the experts. Right? So this is what I think. And when you, when you're an entrepreneur, get used to failure. Today, say, Alibaba, you succeed. Well, 
our company won't last 102 years. Why 102 years? Because every target, every goal we give to our team should be very accurate. We were born in 1999. Last the century, we had one year. We want to spend 100 years and plus one year, one or two, cross three centuries. So very accurate. We never see we are successful because we are only 19 years old. There's 83 years to go. So we will never see we are successful. We just survived 19 years. We are lucky. But in the past 19 years, we have made thousands of mistakes. As an entrepreneur, don't learn from other people how they succeed. Learn from how these people fail. Because a lot of MBA schools, they teach you success, successful case studies. When you read too many successful, you think you can be successful? No. <laughs> there are a lot of things that you don't know. Because, you know, some business school came to Alibaba write case studies. They say, ah, no, this is Alibaba. And I say, no, this is not Alibaba. They wanted me to sign after one week study. They say, this is case study Alibaba A. He said, no, this is not me. They say, Jack, you don't know you. <laughs> and I said, all right, I sign. And next five years, every year there is a case study in Tsinghua University. I was invited to sitting at the back, listen to the MBA schools talk, learning about our case study. And they always put a competitor. Competitor in Alibaba, who has succeeded? For five years, all, they always agree, Alibaba will die, the competitor will win. But five years, all the competitors died. <laughs> so how can you learn from the case study like that? Learn from the mistakes. Because the mistake, most of the companies I, I talk to, entrepreneurs, most of the mistakes they made are the same. Most of the success reasons, you don't know, there are different reasons. So when you learn from the mistakes, not because you want to avoid the mistakes, because when you see the mistakes, when you have these kind of problems, you know how to face it. An entrepreneur has a strong heart towards the difficulties, mistakes, the troubles, the failures, but should it be a warm and soft heart to your colleagues and to the customers. Rule number four is prioritize quality. Last century, the bigger the better. This century, the good the better. Do the business, not because the size, it is not necessary, the big size you are, the more profit you are. You really believe that? I believe that. there's a different we ethic got a so of many, business. You know, we got a Fortune 500 companies, you, you judge because of the size. How many of them are really happy? How many of them have profit? No. Small companies, they are very profitable. They are very happy. They can spend time with the wife and the husband and kids traveling around and that's the life. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is work smart. Who works harder? Uh, the people at eBay or the people at Alibaba? It's sometimes you have not only have to work, how you have to work smart. Mm -hmm. So would you say you work smarter than I, eBay? I'd have to say yes, right? Well, so far. Yeah, so far. So far. Okay. Because I think, you know, um, we are pretty lucky people. And uh, the people say, you, yeah, you work very hard. True, in this world, there's so many people work very hard. But they're not that. I, I told my team when we IPO'd, I ask a lot of people sitting there, I say, you know, all of you guys, most of the guys are millionaires and so rich. But 15 years ago, who are we? It's so difficult for us to hide people 15 years ago. People who are not that bad. I said, people can walk, still walk on the street. <laughs> we hide them. Because nobody believes internet. Nobody believes internet. And they join the company. Those people who believe they're smart, 
they were headhunted by to the other company. They set up their own company. Those people, no, nobody go to headhunting them. They stayed. Today, they be successful. Very key reasons we insist, we persist, we never mm -hmm. give up. Okay. We believe the dreams together. Rule number six is prepare for the long run. And also, I encourage all the old entrepreneurs, if you want to start a business, don't think you will be successful next month or next year. Think about at least five years. Because if something can be successful next month, why you? You have a rich father? You don't have to be a startup. <laughs> right? And uh, by the way, don't be discouraged because you have a poor diploma or, you know, graduate from a poor university or low education. Don't worry about that. If you graduate from MIT, Harvard, you will never be entrepreneur. <laughs> right? They can only be the white collar guys. So as an entrepreneur, you should have the, what is the strategy for entrepreneurs? Strategy is time, 10 years. You compete with the other people, the vision. The world will be there, will be there. What kind of customers they need, how we can build it up. If you prepare for five years and 10 years, if you have a good team, and always do before the government do. If you're waiting for government, you have no chance. Right? When government will say, there is an opportunity there, go that direction. <laughs> because it will be too crowded there. Rule number seven is be the first. Don't try to be the best. Be the first. Be the first to change. Be the first to take the challenge. Be the first one to overcome the difficulties. Because the best person, there's only one Olympic champion. I don't think I'm lucky enough to be that. But I can always try the new things and don't give up, I believe it, because you, you are so unique. Everybody's unique. Be yourself is always the key. Rule number eight is stay focused. What kinds of business ideas have you said no to? I'm saying no to a lot of ideas because as a CEO, I have to say no to opportunities because if I say yes, I probably get 5,000 opportunities every day. But whether yes or no, everything based on the mission that we're helping doing business easier. If it's on that, we'll consider. If our, somebody comes and say, can you, we will, you don't have this deal, we'll make a lot of money, I'm not interested. Rule number nine is empower others. Entrepreneurs, are the most important element to promote, to develop a society. And I think entrepreneurships are the very constructive points and elements of the society. In Africa, I think we need a three E's. E-government, make the government transparent. Entrepreneurs, make them the heroes. Education, make the people know what they want and what they don't want. And as entrepreneur in Africa, I, I, I went to F Africa four years ago. Before I went there, I, know so, I think I know a lot about Africa. When I arrived there, I was surprised. I know so little about Africa. And I promised myself, in 10 years, I will visit every country in Africa. So I visit five countries, at least every trip to Africa in the past four years. And and I think what I can do is to empower the young people, young entrepreneurs. I went to Kenya and met some of the young entrepreneurs. They are so smart. They are so good, much smarter than Jack Ma in 1999. They all have mobile phones. And the thing is, the entrepreneurs in Africa are so different from entrepreneurs in most of the other countries. Most ent entrepreneurs in the other countries they always want, they do entrepreneur, they want to go IPO. These people, they want to change Africa. They want to change their lives. And when I was starting my business, nobody helped us. Very few people. Today, I think I have the capability. I have the money. I have the resources. And I want to go there, empower the entrepreneurs, if we can be able to discover and help more Jack Ma's, more Bill Gates, 
talking about Warren Buffett. Most Steve. Africa will be different. That's what I think. It's my great honor to be there and do something. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is keep your dream alive. We have a secret code for Alibaba success. Just like Open Sesame is the secret code for Alibaba, the secret code for everybody is keep your dream alive because it might come true someday. <laughs> this is what the secret code is. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the things that's so fascinating to me is that Amazon and Jeff Bezos have pursued what might be described as a very asset-heavy business model. They're buying airplanes. They want to own the entire supply chain from beginning to end. And Alibaba has uh, effectively an asset-like business. It, it is very much, in terms of the retail piece of this, the opposite. You don't want to own the warehouses. You don't want to own the logistics companies. How do you think about that? Is Jeff Bezos right or are you right? And is there, is there going to be a, uh, a meeting in the middle? I hope both are right. And because the world can never have one model. If the world has only one correct model, the world is too boring. Right? We need to have all kinds of models. And the people who do the model should believe in the model. And I believe what I do. Right? The difference between Amazon and us. Amazon is more like an empire. Everything they should control themselves, buy and sell. And our philosophy is that we want to be an ecosystem. Our philosophy is to empower others to sell, empower others to, to service, empower making sure the other people are more powerful than us. Making sure with our technology, our innovation, our partners, our 10 million small business sellers, they can compete with Microsoft, IBM. Our philosophy is that we, we think using internet technology, we can make every company become Amazon. For some more Jack Ma motivation, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Somebody look at this challenge as opportunity. Young people always say there's no opportunity. I complain a lot when I was young because I think Bill Gates took all the opportunities for the Microsoft, the Steve Jobs, all these guys.